Hello gamers, welcome to tonight on May Chambers Game Table, where tonight I'm continuing my series of Castles and Crusades solo run, Delve number 13. So, last episode, our heroes, Lothan Cardiff, Staressa Lightbringer, Ash Sundertree, and Tobamus Leatherfoot, were hired by a cleric of Mothus named Bess, who's... Uh, Parish was being terrorized by undead. The undead were rising from a tomb underneath her church, and so she did not have the power or bravery to go forth and battle those undead, so she hired the heroes. The heroes went into the tomb, defeated several undead, and found a really powerful undead, and defeated that undead. So, sorry spoilers, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. Uh, but, Strangely enough, the undead were being animated. That last undead was being animated by a black, dark crystal, purplish, dark energy. And um, they've taken it back to Hawk Tree, or they gave it to the best, the Cleric of Mothis. She put it into a sanctified box, and Staressa felt the evil emanating from that shard disappear. So now, a um, few, uh, a week or so has passed, not too much at all, really. And tales of a local uh, tomb or a uh, delve that the undead are kind of walking out of occasionally and terrorizing passersby uh, near Hawk Tree. So obviously, the adventurers three and uh, Cardiff know or sense that that is probably yet another one of these manifestations of one of these dark stones they found. So they have traveled to the delve and. Cardiff has cast light on his staff and they are to descend into this delve looking for another Harkenstone. And who knows, perhaps it's not a Harkenstone, perhaps it's something else. We shall see. So they go down into this room and of course there's bones in that room. They tend to get this starting card a lot. I shuffle every time, I don't know why. Anyway, so this time they're going to go right and that puts them against a door, a locked door. Interesting. So Tobamus cracks his knuckles, says, step aside, folks. And he goes forward to pick the lock. So he has dexterity as a primary attribute. That's a 12 base. Uh, it says hard lock here on this card, so I'm going to make that uh, 16. He needs a 16. He gets that as level of 4th level and his dexterity modifier of 4, so he gets a plus 8 to this roll, trying to get a 16. So he rolls a 4. That's a 12. He is defeated by the lock. Uh, going to open it. And then uh, he decides that he's going to give it one more shot, but this time I'm going to increase the difficulty uh, because, you know, got to make it a little harder on these guys so it's a 17 he needs now and he gets a plus eight okay that time he was able to pick the lock and he backs up ash opens the door and revealed is a room with some rubble and a magic purplish crystal flanked by two suits of armor so they enter the room cautiously all four of them could this be that which is animating the undead and, Car and Staressa says, no, I do not sense evil necessarily coming off of this, but it is powerful. So Tobinus is like, uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to touch it. And they're all like, no, maybe we should continue moving on if we know for sure that that's not, you know, the thing. And then also Carter says, yes, and who knows what kind of guardians may guard this crystal if it's powerful. But I am intrigued. I'm going to mark this and come back and investigate it at a later date. Because as we all know, Cardiff is obsessed with magic. As a member of the Spell League, he should be. So they decide they're going to go counterclockwise. Not that they quite know where clocks are. Or counter sundial-wise. And there's a lock up here. This one's easy, however. So it's, he needs a 13. He gets plus 8. All right. He gets a 15. Click. They open the double door to reveal... Man, they get this card a lot, too. You know what? I get that card so much, I'm going to flip this out. Yeah, there we go. Because that card is crazy. And 
there's a gun before a door and they car or uh, Toba mislistens. Uh, there's somebody uh, talking or whistling. I hear whistling. So they open a door and they see one of those pit rooms and they, and they smell as soon as they open a the door cooking meat. And there is a man sitting there. No woman sitting there uh, in front of the fire and she is dressed very much like Cardiff. And she turns at their entrance and says, Hello, strange Cardiff. Hello, Finn. It is I. And he says her name. Rala. Uh, let's go... Silverleaf. Rala Silverleaf. May I introduce you to the Adventurers Three? This is Rala Silverleaf, another member of the Spell League. May I inquire as to what you are doing in this dank, dark, horrible place? And she says, Perhaps the same as you. I've come listening to the reports of the undead walking in this area. But I found this most interesting spell book in this chest. And at this at the mention of spell book, Lothan's his, his eyebrows go up. Oh, really? As we all know, the Spell League, for those of you that haven't watched some of my other videos, Spell League is a group that is dedicated to finding and um, cataloging and preserving all of the spells and scrolls that they find scattered through all the many ruins and dells in, uh, this, in the world. So, yes, uh, it's intriguing. Um, and I believe it is a spell book of a person who preferred necromantic spells. Ah, interesting, says Lothan. So, have you seen any undead? No, this is as far as I've come. Uh, I tried to get through the lock into that other room off to the east, but I could, it foiled me, and I do not have a knock spell ready. Yes, yes, uh, our halfling friend here got us in there. It's a magic crystal you may want to investigate in a little bit. Yes. Well, enjoy your dinner. She goes, well, will you join me? Well, we have traveled far. What say you, Adventures 3? Ash is like, let's go. I want to go. Find the undead. We must stop this menace. Well, thank you for your offer. But we shall continue on. Do you know what lies beyond the double doors? No, like I said, this is as far as I've come. Well, enjoy your dinner and hope to see you back at Spell League headquarters. Yes, Hawk Tree is nice this time of year. So they go through the door... And on the other side is a hallway that leads to another locked door. So, a uh, very hard lock. We're going to say that it's seven. It has, a, it has a seal of seven. So that's a 19 for Tobamus to pick, and he gets plus eight. Fifteen. So he does it. Click. It takes him a while, but he gets it. Then he listens. Hmm. Uh, uh, I don't hear anything. And then Ash opens the door and revealed in this room are is skeletons. Some of their flesh still upon them wielding short swords. And so let us go and see what we can see. All right, so uh, one to ten. Uh, I just gonna, I'm just going to do eight. I'll do two per adventurer. And I'm going to give them uh, ten hit points each. Okay, that's eight. Ten hit points each. And they start towards the party as soon as they open the door. Ash opens the door, and we are into initiative. All right, so we have Lothan first, Tobamus, then Ash, the Skeletons, and Staressa. 
Lothan, uh, he is not, well, he's only got two charges left on his Wand of Magic Missiles. He's going to save that. He doesn't feel like using a spell slot. But instead, he's going to cast Invisibility upon himself. Second level spell. He is invisible. And he's going to move. Oh, wait. If he, No, he's not going to move. He just casts Spell, Invisibility, done. Because if he moves, he has to make a concentration check according to my house rules. Tobamus lets loose with his crossbow. Hits. And he does half damage against these puppies. And that's a three damage. So he hits one for three. Then we go to Ash. He rushes forward with blinding monk-like speed and smashes into a um, skeleton with his fists. He hits armor class 14. That's enough to smash through the defenses of this walking skeletal body. And he does D8 plus three. He does nine damage. Oh, almost took one down. And now he stands amongst the skeletons and they attack. Um, some of them move forward to try to attack the people near the door. And three of the skeletons attack Ash. Armor class 14 for Ash. And he is hit by one of them. He takes a d6 damage. Six damage. Ouch. That hurts. So, he takes six damage. He's down to 40 hit points. Remember, he is fourth level. All right, and finally, Staressa. So, she is going to attempt to turn the creatures. And she needs to make a 12... 13... Uh, 13... 13 turning check. She gets to add one... She's third level paladin, but that means she's only a first level cleric for turning undead purposes. So, she adds her wisdom bonus plus her level is plus three. And she needs a 13. And she gets a 12. Look at that, kids. Ouch. So she is unable to turn them, so we go into initiative. I think she's looking forward to be able to have more power from her. Man, she's having a bad day so far. All right. All right, so Ash is going to punch the one he punched before he hits. He smashes it to the ground. It drops because it is... Um, it only had a single health point left, hit point left. Uh, I can't wait for him to hit uh, another level or two so he can get multiple attacks because, you know, that's cool. All right, then the skeletons, three of them attack Ash. Uh, one hits, the other one miss, the other two miss. He takes some more damage, and it's three damage this time, so he's down to 37. Then... Um, Um, so they've moved up and one of them attacks, uh, Staressa. Well, now we're going to have two of them attack Staressa, three attack Staressa, because they just don't like her. One's going to attack, um, Lothan. These are attacks on Staressa. Ooh, one of them got through with a 20. Ouch. The other two missed. So she takes five damage. That makes that, uh, 26 hit points left. All right, so, and then uh, Lothan gets, um, one attack by a stray skeleton. Oh, a crit. Of course it's a crit. Of course. I love it. <laughs> All right, so, uh, six, eight damage. He takes eight damage. Boom. Dang, he's got to get out of combat fast. All right, so uh, I believe that's the end of the round, it looks like. Or did Tobamus attack? No. Oh, wait, these three have to attack. I moved the dice out of the way. So Tobamus is going to fire off his crossbow at the one attacking Lothan. He hits it, and he does one damage. That's not stellar. All right, but hey, got to do what you got to do. Then uh, we're going to go um, Lothan. He, slaps, he, he swings his staff at the one in front of him, his lighted staff, and he hits armor class 10 and misses. Staressa can't turn him, but she moves forward. Um, she moves 
If she just has three around her. She's not going to move at all. She's going to attack the ones in front of her. She hits. She does a D8 plus... Oh, these are evil creatures, too. Oh, no, they're neutral. Never mind. So she does six plus three, nine damage with a magical morning star, her Ebon Hafted morning star. And that is not enough to take one down. So move to initiative. Track the initiative a little better next time. Whew. Okay, so Lothan, he's still fighting desperately. We're going to go Staressa, Skeletons. Oh, Toby Miss. Toba Miss. He's going to let loose with a crossbow at the one fighting Lothan. He misses. Then um, Stares is going to, or no, uh, Lothan's going to swing his staff at the one that's attacking him, and he misses. Stares attacks one of the ones on her that she wounded before. She hits it and drops it. and only have one hit point left. She gets ready to take on the next one. All right, so we're going to go three attacks on, um, we're going to go three attacks on Ash. No hits this time. He manages to dodge it with his monk-like dodgery. And then we're going to have three attacks. On, nope, two attacks on Staressa. No hits. And then uh, we are going to have the one attack on Lothan. And misses. Okay. So now Ash punches another... Uh, punches one that has been hit by a crossbow. Punches it. It's a D8 plus three. Cracking skulls. Literally. Oh, uh, four. Not enough to take it down. Disappointing. All right, here we go. Initiative. Skeletons swarm around them. Slashing blades. Flashing spells. Cries. War cries. Gasps of pain. Lothan with his staff. Oh, did he finally hit? He hit. Smacked it. And does five damage. Whittling away. Staressa attacks one in front of her, and 12 just misses off of its scrap of armor. So now their attack, uh, th three attacks on Ash, one hits. Dang, he's taking a beating. So, with his short sword, five damage down to 32 hit points. Could it be? Could it be? All right, and then... Um, Two attacks on Staressa. Crit. <laughs> Six, seven damage. Oh, boy. We're okay. So everybody's okay. Just everybody relax. We're good. Nobody panic. Stay together, team. All right. And then um, one attack on our boy, Lothan Cardiff. And that's a complete miss. It drops its short sword. Ash punches a new one. Crits it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. He's finally summoning the power of his fists. Oh, my gosh. Lots of foresight. All right, so he did um, 8, 9, 12 damage, cracking um, fresh one across the skull and literally taking it out. Tobamus lets fly a crossbow bolt at the one fighting Lothan. He hits and does 3 damage. Nice. Not enough, though. That thing is up and still attacking the wizard. It's taking quite a beating. So now we go to an issue. Skeletons are going on. All right, so Lothan on three. Skells on five. Ash on four. Stress on three. And Tobamus on two. Here we go. Swings his staff and misses. Attacks him. Oop, hit. Does a D6. Four damage. He is grossly close to dying. Or going down, at least. Uh, two attacks on Ash. Crit again? Are you kidding me? Six, eight damage. All right. So he's got um, 24 left. Yowza. That is severely unpleasant. And then um, we get two attacks on Staressa. Both miss. All right. Ash, punch it out, baby. Misses. Then uh, Staressa with her Morning Star. Cracks one pretty hard. Does, of course, a one. She rolls a one, so that's uh, four damage. Um, it is not enough to take down one on her. So she still has two remaining on her. Tobemus, let's fly with a crossbow bolt at the one attacking his buddy, Lothan, and it misses. 
Okay, skeletons go first. Staressa next. Ash, then Tobamus, then Lothan. All right, so two attacks, three attacks on Ash. That's two hits because he has armor class of 14. So he takes this much damage. Five more damage. He's at 19. Tobamus is probably going to have to do something soon. All right. Uh, Staressa swings her Morning Star for a 12. Just misses. Oh, wait, I forgot. We got to attack Lothan. There's one left. He hits Lothan with a 13. This could be it, kids. Oh, Lothan goes down to negative 2. So we're going to put him down to negative 2. So he's not. He's, yeah, he's. Yeah, okay. So he falls. Tobin screams, No! Spell wizard book guy, I will avenge you. All right, but in the meantime, Ash is going to punch another semi. No, he's going to take out the skeleton that's wounded. Uh, 13 just hits, and um, probably going to take him down, but I can't take anything for granted. Ha, <laughs> see? Four, he does take him down. So he's got one remaining skeleton on him, two are on Staressa. One is fighting Lothan. Tobamus lets loose a crossbow bolt and hits the one that hurt his friend, taking the crossbow bolt through the skeletal eye socket and taking it out the back of the skeleton head and it drops to the ground. You are avenged, my friend. Uh, take that. All right. Oh, my gosh. I think I knocked Tobamus on the floor. Where'd Tobamus go? I'm a little crowded tonight, I guess. I think I lost a foresight on the floor. Tobamus is hiding in shadows so well you can't see him. <laughs> Alright, we'll pretend the miniature's there. I just use him for effect anyway. I don't know what happened to poor Tobamus. He's hiding after he let loose that crossbow bolt. And then Loth Lothan um, is down. So we'll remove his initiative from that. Uh, we'll roll initiative for everybody else. Alright, Ash... Man, Tobamus is so upset he can't barely act. Ash punches another one. Uh, hits armor cost 15, so he smacks it hard and does a D8 plus 3. So that's 9. Doesn't quite fell it, but he's making progress. So one attack on him. Missed. Uh, two attacks on Staressa. Ooh, one of them hit. Man, they're getting through that hefty defense of hers. She's taking some damage. One damage. That's just a glancing blow. She's at 18. All right. And then Staressa swings and hits. Does a D8 plus 3. Smacking sound of bone cracking. Oh, my gosh. I got to stop rolling that die. Four damage. Uh, still not enough to take one down. It's getting annoying. Tobamus, um, since he took down the skeleton, he runs over and he uses the heal the dwarven healing stone the party carries to uh bring lothan to uh zero hit points lothan moans a bit as he still lies upon the floor and that was tobamus's um action so now we go to here we've got staressa we've got tobamus we've got skeletons and we've got ash all right so staressa swings and 12 just misses she loves the seven. Tobamus uses the healing stone again to heal a D8 to his friend. And he has three hit points currently. And he's up. I mean, he's not up, up. His, his miniature's up. He's lying on the floor still. Then, um, the skeletons attack. Uh, two attacks Staressa, and the gray one is Ash. Hits Ash, misses Staressa. Does a D6 damage. Takes 6 damage. Dang, man. He's taking a pummeling from these things. They're slashing with their short swords. He strikes back. Ooh, that's a nice hit. Boom. Punches it right in the skeletal face. Yeah, baby. For 11 damage. And he drops another one. Two remain. Both fighting Staressa. Initiative. Let's see who acts first. Okay, we got Ash. He's on a roll. Tobamus. We'll go Staressa, then the skeletons. Ash unleashes. He hits with a 15. Uh, he does a D8 plus 3. 6. He smashes down one of the ones attacking Stressa. There's one skeleton remaining. Tobamus uses the healing stone again to heal his friend. Back to 
11 hit points. Oh my goodness, I just knocked Ash on the floor. Okay, all right, cool. That brings us to Staressa. She swings at the one that she's fighting. She hits it and does seven damage to it, cracking open its rib cage. And then it attacks her, and 16 just misses. Initiative. Oh, we get to put, uh, get to put our boy back in. Lothan. Oh, look at that. Lothan's upset. Does not like coming to the brink of death. I mean, who does, really? All right. So, Lothan stands up. Ugh. Staggers over to the skeleton that's near him with Vysteressa and swings his and hits and does five damage, dropping the skeletons to the ground. So, that... They defeat them. Um, so I'm going to use the treasure type of the skeletons, see what kind of treasure they have in this room. But they didn't find anything that looked like uh, the black purplish glowing stone. So we shall see what they find. Treasure type tables in the Monsters and Treasure book. All right. All right, I used to have a bookmark in there. Apparently that bookmark is now gone. There, oh, bookmark's there, sorry. All right, so here we go. We're gonna roll there. Treasure one, we'll roll some percentages here. So 15. So there is gold, 2d4 times 10. They find it in um, the wardrobe over there. 60 gold pieces. Then they're going to see if there are any gems. There are no gems. Let's see if there is an extraordinary item. There's no extraordinary item. Let's see if there's a magic item. No magic item. Okay, so they found some coinage, and that's good to go. So moving on. Find nothing else in this room. They leave the room, go back through. They say hello to the wizardress from the Spell League that is a companion of uh, Cardiff's. And then they go to this double door, the only door they have left. And before they go down this dark hallway that's lit by Cardiff's, they decide they're going to heal uh, Ash. So he's healed three, 16. They're going to heal... Um, they're going to heal Staressa. No, yes, five, 23. And then for the final, they're gonna hit Ash again. For four more, he's at 20. And she is going to lay hands upon herself to bring her back to, she gets eight, or she gets uh, six hit points and she has 23, that'll be 29. That'll bring her up to 29 hit points. Better than nothing going into what appears to maybe the final battle. So, they open the door. The hallway, oh yeah, and they come to a door. Toby must hear something. Or does he? He does not. They open the door. Cardiff's light shines into the room, making the room seem as if it's moving. There's a treasure chest across the hall revealed by his light, a shattered table, a shattered uh, storage cabinet. Bones, of course, bones. Not enough to bring him together into a skeleton. And then, floating in the middle of the room is a black and purplish stone. And what 
is it doing here? Cardiff is like, we must get that stone and get it out of here. And Staressa says, hold a moment, wizard. I sense evil. Okay. Careful, adventurers three. There is great evil here. I have brought a sanctified uh, small carrying chest that I have in my backpack. It takes up my entire backpack, but so be it. I need to get the stone into the back, into the, the chest. So I shall go forward. Oh, I turned Cardiff invisible, didn't I? And then, but I must have swung the, I bet I swung the staff before we did it. Oh, well, sorry. Chaos of combat. Okay, so she walks forward. And suddenly it's as if the shadows come alive and indeed shadows move towards them. As the shadows move, Ash recognize, Ash detects little dark shadowy tendrils that are reaching out from the black slated stone, animating the shadow souls as they three of them move upon Staressa. So there are three shadows, and they are that many hit dice. Mm, okay, yeah, that's okay. All right, we will call it that. They have that many hit points. They may only be hit by medical weapons. And, yes, there are three of them. They have moved upon Staressa. They all attack her, reaching out with their shadowy hands, and none of them are able to touch her. She dodges about. She gets plus two armor class against these foul, evil, undead. We are now rolling initiative. All right. So, Staressa is first. Of course, she's moved by such horrific evil. So, she is going to attempt to turn to shadows. In the name of Palin, God of goodness and light, be gone, you foul undead. So, she gets a... Uh, it's a 12 to turn them. She gets uh, 12. Actually, it's a 15. They're three hit die creatures. So 15 to turn them. She gets a plus three to this roll. And she does. The shadows streak back to the walls as far away as they can. It uh, turns 2d4 of these undead. And it does turn. Yeah, there's only three of them. That was a five. So thank goodness it wasn't a two. That would have been very undramatic. All right, the shadows scatter to the walls. And it is now Lothan's turn. Um, he goes forward. He is, and he pulls on a, he pulls on a glove. And reaches for the stone. And puts it into the, chest that Staressa has open. She closes it, and she says, "The evil is contained, but we must get it out of here before more undead appear." Well, let us go quickly quickly all so they make their way out the double door as soon as they enter this room there is the spell league friend of Lothan um, Rala Silverleaf and she says oh I'm so sorry I cannot let you leave here with that stone I have need of it. And he's like, Rala, what are you doing? Only what needs to be done to bring death to the world. Oh, that's so cliche, Rala. Hand it over or die. Very well. You die. Initiative. All right. 
So we're going to give her um, All right, we're gonna give her this many hit points. And we're gonna give her some spells in my head. All right, here we go. Oh, I rolled, did I roll initiative? Or oh, roll initiative again. All right, she rolls a five. Stress an eight. Lothan a five. Tobim is a five. And Rala a five, and Ash a three. So Staressa says, I cannot allow anyone who seems to have evil intent to take this stone from us. You shall pay. And she has already put the, she put the chest in her backpack uh, when they left the room, and now she runs forward with her ebon-hafted Morningstar and swings, rolls a 15, uh, plus five is a five. She, 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 she swings at Rala, and at first her arm meets some magical resistance, but then clips Rala and does this much damage. Oh, not great, but okay. All right. Then Lothan is like, hmm, I suspect you have a shield spell up, so I'm going to fire an acid arrow in your face. And he hits a armor class. It's a touch attack, but she has shield. Shield up. It will protect against ranged attacks. He knows this, but it won't. It doesn't completely foil it, just like it would a magic missile. So let's see. Let's double check the armor class of shield against a magical. Shield, uh, melee attacks, and okay, device roll, okay, hand hurled, okay, okay, so hand hurled, I'm going to consider an acid arrow a hand hurled, so she has armor class, um, armor class 18 against that, so let's go check really quick acid arrow and see, make sure that it is a touch attack, but I think I'm going to make an armor class 18 anyway, but I want to see what else I can see from acid arrow. All right, Magic Order Springs Force of Caster's Hand, Stream Sword is a single target, which we did. It must succeed a range touch attack to hit the target. Yeah, but... Well, I guess it's a magical weapon. So maybe... All right. You know what? No, I, I'm gonna. I'm still going to make it 18. I think that just makes sense. Magical protection, so... We'll see if he hits. Um, he gets to add his Dexterity modifier, which is a plus two. All right, so he rolled a 17 total... So, oh, plus base attack. Oh, 18, he just hit. So the acid arrow sizzles, sizzles through the shield and slams into the treacherous spelly traitor. Seven acid damage. And we shall see if she takes more on the next turn. Oh, you shall pay for that. And it hit her in the face and it's hor horribly defigured her face as part of her skin melts off of it. You shall pay. And just as that, Tobimus lets fire a crossbow. She has armor class 17 against crossbows with the shield spell. So that is a uh, 20 total. So his crossbow shoots through with no problem, does a d6. And she takes five more damage from a crossbow bolt that slams into her. And then she casts a spell and is invisible. Before she does it, she says, You shall all pay. She casts a spell. Now she's invisible. So everybody has minus 10 to hit her. Ash runs forward and swings at minus 10. And he misses. Initiative. All right. Staressa. Tobamus. Staressa. Ash, Lothan, and her. Tobamus, um, he... He goes invisible with his ring of invisibility. Two can play at that game. And he activates that, and we'll call it that. All right. And he moves, or sneaks. Okay, well, maybe he doesn't. <laughs> uh, Staressa is like uh she 
she doesn't have spell that keeps <laughs> I always in my head for some reason think that she's like a cleric it's so strange uh, she can detect evil though but is this woman evil or is she just selfish so she's not going to spend the time doing that she's going to run forward to the last place she was and take a swing at minus 10 she misses Ash um, Ash has he has he has increased perception as an elf so I'm going to give him a uh, wisdom check to see if he can detect her. Um, so I'm going to make that an 18 because that's his, it's not a primary attribute for him. And it's 18 and it's very, very, it's like, yeah, it's a 28. I'm just going to roll, he needs to roll a natural 20. And he doesn't. All right. And um, so he doesn't sense her. So he just runs up to the first place, the last place she was, and he swings and misses and then Lothan, he has, or she's burning, by the way. 2d4. Since he is third level, she takes that much more damage. Manages not to scream out in pain. And then Lothan, um, he casts web uh, across the entrance to the delve so she cannot escape. That's a second level spell. It's her turn. Uh, she um, she moves or does she? She might just cast a spell but then she'll become visible but that's alright. She needs to get through that web. She's damaged greatly. And so she is... I'll give her... Burning hands. And suddenly she becomes visible. She's standing in front of the web. And she burns out most of the web with her burning hands. And that is initiative. Tobamus. He ain't messing around, baby. Lothan. She might have a chance to escape if they don't take her down. Uh, she is facing the web, and I think shield spell does. Shield spell has to be in front of, or does it? Let me check. And shield spell like protects her from behind as well. I don't think it does, but I need to check. Attacks from the side or rear are unaffected. Yep, I, that's what I thought. All right, so Thomas is gonna let fly with the crossbow bolts. Oof, he hits her. Uh oh, this could be it. Two. Oh, she's still up. Ugh, she's like, ah, that hurt. Lothan is like, if he goes behind, he move, he has to move 15 feet to maneuver himself to be able to fire off a magic missile at her and hopefully take her down so that it's not affected by the shield. So he's going to have to make a concentration check against intelligence, which for him is a primary 12. Um, he's casting a first level spell, so the, the challenge level would be 13, and he gets plus 6 to this. Oh my gosh, he just makes it. And he's able to get his spell off with a spell slot. Fires off uh, two magic missiles. They slam into her back, three, four, five, and she drops to the ground and says, you shall all be consumed by the dead and drops to the ground herself. Lothan walks over, finds the uh, necklace of an open book, rips it off, says, you are not worthy to wear this. Finds all of her magical writings, puts them in his own pack, and says, we now need to leave this place. It is spoiled for me. Traitors are the worst kind. They would take knowledge for their own. They're worse. She's worse than the archivists. And so they go out. They go back to the... Um, they go to the church of Palin that is located in Hawk Tree, the Temple of the Shining Light. And they give it, get, put the box into the, into the church's uh, vaults to keep it from being able to be released and is well protected here by many clerics and paladins of Palin. 
and so that's where they found that's where they put the heart the, the the stone and it's safe there all right so they they they're going to have to decide what to do they, they feel like they should write they need to get more information because this is this is getting to be strange and obviously something's afoot so that's what they're going to do before the next adventure uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Uh, the map came up. It was a pretty short map, and that's okay. Uh, sometimes adventures are quick, and that's the way it goes. But in the meantime, I thought it was pretty harrowing, actually. That first battle with the skeletons I thought was awesome. And then uh, I'm loving how the story's advancing in my mind. I'm pretty excited. A lot of them I'm making up as I go along. Obviously, uh, that that seems to be working so far. So hopefully it continues to be just as exciting for me, just as exciting for you as it is for me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the interaction with me. I'm glad you're enjoying the series as much as I am. And until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Magehammer out. Thanks again.